I'm an undergraduate at SUNY CSF, and my RU project was assessing sugar maple and quality um, following an ice storm through Caterpillar Growth Rate. So to give you guys a background on ice storms, um, we're studying ice storms because many studies have shown that ice storms are expected to increase in frequency and intensity in the coming years with climate change. Um, so what is an ice storm? The National Weather Service defines an ice storm as a precipitation event that results in the accumulation of at least 6.35 millimeters of ice. And something you guys might hear a lot about is the ice storm of 1998. So this was one of the most devastating storms that went across uh, northeastern America and Canada. And it left 1.4 million people without power. There was loss of human life and huge economic consequences. So ice storms have huge impacts on people, on infrastructure, as you can see by the power line damage, and it can cause loss of human life. And in addition to that, there's also huge ecological consequences, um, and that's what we're looking at here. So this is a picture of one of the ice blocks, and as you can see, um, there's saplings like completely bent over, the saplings snapped, and the structure and function of this forest ecosystem has been drastically so I looked at sugar maple and beech. Um, I was looking at sugar maple in the canopy, and they're considered relatively resilient to damage from ice. However, studies have shown that after an ice storm, sugar maple will decrease in density um, at the canopy level. However, their saplings are considered to be very shade tolerant. Um, American beech will sustain more canopy damage than the sugar maple, um, but when you create those canopy gaps, it creates an opportunity for understory beach to grow because there's more light. So studies have shown following ice storms that American beach will increase in height, size, growth, and survivorship. Um, in terms of leaf response, so when you have even a very small gap, um, photosynthetically active radiation, so basically just the light coming in that's producing photosynthesis, um, will increase. And as percent photosynthetic photon flux density increases, um, so again, just light coming in, uh, we tend to see increased leaf area indices, so the leaves are getting bigger in relation to the amount of ground that they're covering. Um, we see decreased leaf area ratio, so the amount of those leaves devoted to producing photo, or, uh, photosynthetic processes increases. So the leaves are getting better, and they can uh, devote more of their energy to photosynthesis. In terms of insect response to canopy gaps, um, it's been shown that Lepidoptera are more abundant in canopy gaps, and this is thought to be a result of improved light conditions, um, thereby increasing the quality of the leaves for them to feed on. So based on all of that background information, <coughs> I hypothesize that the growth rate of the caterpillars when fed sugar maple leaves from the high treatment pots would be lower um, because thinking about the canopy, those leaves would sustain more damage and be of lower quality and consumption rate. So how much they were eating would be higher in the high treatment pots because they would have to eat more food to grow the same amount. And then for American beech, I hypothesized that the caterpillar growth rate would be higher in the high treatment pots because you're thinking understory beech, more light coming in, higher quality leaves. Um, so they would grow more. And then consumption rate would be lower in the high treatment pots because they could eat less to grow the same amount. And I did this here at the Hebergrove Experimental Forest. Um, so this forest is primarily a northern hardwood forest, and the dominant tree species are American beech, sugar maple, and yellow birch. So uh, the ice storm experiment occurred here in January of 2016, and they ran hoses from the Hubbard Brook and sprayed 10 experimental ice pots, which were 20 meters by 30 meters in size. Um, there were two control pots with no ice, two low treatment plots with six millimeters of ice, four medium treatment plots with 13 millimeters of ice, and two high treatment plots with um, 19 millimeters of ice. And two of the medium treatment plots will be treated again this coming winter. My insect species of choice was the gypsy moth caterpillar, and I chose them because they're highly destructive invasive species that are really easy to rear in the lab. So they were raised to their third or fourth instar, so they molded three or four times, and um, we raised them in the lab in Syracuse. 
So Wendy and I went out here and collected um, American beech leaves and sugar maple leaves. So to collect, we were trying to collect the canopy sugar maple leaves and we used pole printers to try to reach up as high as we could. Talk more about that later. Um, and then back in the lab in Syracuse, we ran leaf quality bioassays um, where we took culture, tissue culture dishes and we put either beech leaves or sugar maples in the sugar maple leaves in the dish and then we put the caterpillar in, sealed it up, and put them in an incubation chamber for 72 hours. From those assays, I was able to calculate relative growth rate and relative consumption rate. Um, so for growth rate, I needed the initial larval dry mass and final larval dry mass. Um, and then for consumption rate, I needed initial leaf dry mass and final leaf dry mass. So you might be wondering how you get the dry mass of a live caterpillar. Um, I'll show you. So we had um, a subset of 33 caterpillars that we took the wet weight before and then dried and had their dry weight after. And we got, from that we got a nice conversion factor which allowed us to convert the wet weight, the initial wet weight, to dry weight. And we did the same thing with the beach and the maple leaves. So, um, in terms of results, I found what I expected to find with the beach. The highest growth rate was in the high treatment plots, indicating higher quality. Um, however, what I saw with the sugar maple was exactly the opposite of what I expected to see. Um, the sugar maple leaves in the high treatment plot had the highest growth rate, so that was interesting. And then for consumption rate, again, with the beach, um, I saw what I expected to see. Um, with the lowest consumption rate in the high treatment plot, they were eating the least amount there. Um, but again, with the sugar maple, I saw the opposite of what I expected to see. So, in terms of why I saw what I did with the sugar maple, um, we weren't able to sample the true canopy, like we weren't able to get high enough of the full printer, so really we were sampling understory sugar maple. And understory sugar maple um, actually can have a very high leaf area to branch surface area and length ratio, meaning their leaves and these canopy gaps can be bigger without increasing the size of their branches, so they're increasing their photosynthetic capacity without increasing their energetic inputs. And beech can only do this under canopy cover, it won't really do this in the high treatment plots. So that could also explain why we were seeing higher growth rates in the sugar maple than we were with the beech. And then looking towards the future, so we will be running nutrient analyses when I get back to Syracuse to see what was going on with that. Um, but in general, higher quality leaves mean that they had a lower carbon to nitrogen ratio. So this could either mean that there was less carbon or more nitrogen. So let's just say there was more nitrogen. Um, <laughs> the carbon nutrient balance hypothesis would suggest that greater amounts of nitrogen means that the plants need to compensate somehow. So they will decrease their amount of carbon-based chemical defenses. So increased nitrogen, lower chemical defenses. The leaves are more susceptible to herbivory um, because they're higher quality. They're easier for the caterpillars to eat. So in the future, um, again, I'll be running leaf nutrient analyses. Um, it would have been nice to actually sample the canopy we really didn't get to. And it would be interesting to look at how changes in nitrogen over time at the ice plots would affect the leaf quality um, that we will see. So in conclusion, canopy gaps um, form as a result of ice accumulation. More light comes in, um, understory maple and beech leaf quality increases, and this would indicate that the carbon to nitrogen ratio is lower in the hydrogen.